ever just like stumble on something that completely changes how you see things? Oh, absolutely. Happens all the time in research. Yeah. Well, this whole deep dive on planetary anti-fragility, it's kind of like that. It's intriguing stuff, isn't it? Totally. We're digging into this research paper and it argues that Earth isn't just passively taking a beating from, you know, everything we're doing to it. It's more like we might be messing with its ability to bounce back, its resilience on a fundamental level. Right. Like we're not just punching a wall. We're weakening the wall's structure itself. Very apt analogy. And what's fascinating is they propose this one measure for this whole anti-fragility thing, Earth's albedo. Albedo. Okay. Remind me again. That's essentially how much light Earth reflects. Yeah. Exactly. High albedo. Think mirror. Reflecting most of the light. Low albedo. Think forest. Soaking mm -hmm. up that sunlight. It's all about how Earth uses energy, really, at its core. Mm -hmm. And a planet teeming with life, well, it's effectively using the sun's energy, which generally should mean lower albedo over time. Like Earth getting better at catching and using sunlight to fuel life. So it's a measure of how efficient the planet is at utilizing the energy available to it. Oh. Fascinating. What's Earth's report card looking like these days? All right. So they looked at satellite data of the northern hemisphere's albedo, focused on July, by the way, to minimize the whole snow and ice skewing the data thing. Makes sense. Keep it consistent. And they found that between 82 and 2010, Earth's albedo did decrease. But, and this is where it gets really interesting. Get me with the butt. While the albedo went down, meaning Earth probably getting better at using that sun energy, the stability of that albedo, that also decreased. Decreased stability. Okay, now that's something I need unpacked a bit. Why is that significant? Imagine a swing set, a sturdy one. You give it a push, swings back and forth, but eventually it returns to its resting point, right? Right, back to equilibrium. Now imagine a rusty swing set. Same push, but this time it swings erratically, unpredictably, takes way longer to settle. Yeah, I'm getting a picture here. A bit shaky, that swing set. That's essentially what they suggest is happening with Earth's albedo. It's becoming less predictable, less able to just smoothly bounce back from any disruptions. So it's not just about how much energy Earth uses, but about how well can maintain that balance, that ability to recover. Hmm. We're talking about a fundamental shift in Earth's ability to handle whatever's thrown at it. Exactly. And this research suggests that all this human activity, it could be messing with Earth's inherent anti-fragility, that ability to just adapt and thrive in response to whatever's going on. Okay, so now my brain's really starting to churn here. Uh -huh. Before we get too deep into the implications of all this, I think it's important to remember that this research paper is just one piece of a massive puzzle, right? Without a doubt. The researchers themselves acknowledge that. They're basically offering a new way of thinking about Earth's resilience, a new dimension to consider as we try to grapple with the impacts of all this human activity. And that new dimension, this whole planetary anti-fragility concept, it could be just as important as things like measuring carbon emissions or tracking temperature changes. It's a new lens to view the problem through. It's like we've been laser focused on the symptoms on those alarming numbers that we haven't stopped to check the planet's overall health, you know, its ability to heal itself. Precisely. It's not just about treating the symptoms of environmental change. It's about understanding and potentially enhancing Earth's own inherent resilience, its ability to adapt and thrive in the face of all these challenges we keep throwing at it. Okay, that is a pretty radical shift in perspective. Uh, it's not just about minimizing our impact. It's about actively finding ways to support and even enhance Earth's own self-regulating systems. But how do we even begin to do that on a planetary scale? What are these researchers proposing? Well, they're suggesting we need to look further into how things like biodiversity. Okay, makes sense. The whole variety of life thing. But also bioacoustics. Wait, what? Like the sounds of nature. Yep. And even soil respiration. All these seemingly disparate factors might play a role. Bioacoustics. Hmm. Soil. All right, now you've really got my attention. Let's unpack these a bit further. What do those things have to do with the planet's ability to roll with the punches? Bioacoustics and soil. Not exactly the first things that pop into your head when you think about, you know, saving the planet. It's not your typical environmental headline, that's for sure. So let's start with bioacoustics. How can the sounds of nature actually give us clues about Earth's anti-fragility? I mean, it sounds kind of out there. It's about listening to the symphony of life. Think about a thriving rainforest. You've got insects buzzing, birds calling, monkeys howling, this whole sandscape of life unfolding. Right, this cacophony of nature. Exactly. Now contrast that with a struggling forest, one that's lost a lot of its biodiversity. What do you hear? A lot less, I'd imagine. 
quieter, less diverse? You got it. And that's the key. A healthy soundscape, one with a wide variety of sounds, it's a good indicator of a healthy, diverse ecosystem. So we're talking about more than just pretty bird songs. A rich soundscape is like a sign of a thriving, resilient ecosystem. Precisely. It points to complexity, to those intricate connections between different species, all those interactions that make an ecosystem work. It's like eavesdropping on the web of life. The more voices, the more intricate the conversation. But how do we go from sound, those natural noises, to something as complex as planetary antifragility? What's the link? It all comes back to that idea of interconnectedness. A bioacoustically rich environment, it usually means a more diverse and resilient ecosystem, one that can better handle change. Like a tapestry, the more threads you have, the stronger it is, the less likely it is to unravel. Okay, I see where you're going with this. The more diverse the soundscape, the more diverse the life, and the better equipped that ecosystem is to adapt and bounce back from whatever hits it. Okay, so bioacoustics is listening to the planet breathe. What about the soil? What makes good old-fashioned dirt so important here? Never underestimate the power of healthy soil. It's not just dirt. It's a living, breathing ecosystem in its own right, teeming with microbial life. And that microscopic world, that's what really drives things, right? Exactly. Those microbes, they're essential for everything, from carbon cycling, how carbon moves through the environment, to making sure plants have the nutrients they need to grow. So basically, healthy soil equals a healthy planet. Mm. How does that connect to this idea of Earth's anti-fragility, its capacity to deal with change? Healthy, active soil is really good at sequestering carbon, pulling it out of the atmosphere and storing it safely underground. That's huge. Right. Carbon sequestration is a big deal these days. And it doesn't stop there. Healthy soil also helps regulate water cycles, making sure water is available where and when it's needed. And of course, it provides all those essential nutrients for plants, which are the foundation of most ecosystems. It's like the foundation upon which everything else is built. It's amazing how all these seemingly separate things, the sounds of a rainforest, the health of the soil beneath our feet, tie back to this bigger idea of planetary antifragility. It really underscores how deeply interconnected everything is and how even small changes can ripple out and have these huge effects on the entire system. It's like we're being challenged to look at Earth not just as a planet we live on, but as this complex, interconnected living system we're a part of. Exactly. And that shift in perspective is crucial. And part of that shift is recognizing that this planet, it has its own incredible mechanisms for resilience and adaptation. It's not just us trying to hold things together. Which leads us to the big question, the one we're all grappling with. What can we actually do to make sure Earth can keep doing its thing to bolster that anti-fragility? How do we go from understanding these concepts to actually taking action? So we've spent all this time talking about how Earth had these amazing self-regulating mechanisms, this inherent anti-fragility. Mm. But with everything we're learning about, you know, human impact and the strain we're putting on the planet, what can we actually do to help, to support and maybe even enhance Earth's ability to adapt. It's the question, isn't it? And this paper doesn't really give us a simple answer, a to-do list for planetary resilience. No easy answers, huh? Not exactly. It's more of a call to action, but one grounded in a totally different perspective. It's less about finding a quick fix and more about recognizing we're part of something way more complex than we often realize. So less about fixing the planet and more about changing our own approach, how we view our place in all of this. Which makes a lot of sense. But there have to be some starting points, mm -hmm. you know, concrete things we can do that align with this whole anti-fragility idea. Absolutely. And the researchers, they put a lot of emphasis on biodiversity, on protecting and restoring it. Makes sense. More variety, a wider range of species, from those tiny microbes to, like, giant sequoia trees. Even those deep-sea creatures we rarely see. Right. It all contributes to a more resilient, more adaptable ecosystem. It's like if one species struggles, others can fill in the gaps, keep things running smoothly. Like a safety net for the whole planet. Exactly. And it goes beyond just the sheer number of species, too. It's about protecting those relationships between them, the intricate ways they interact and depend on one another. That complexity, that's what gives an ecosystem its strength. It's about the whole web of life, those connections, not just individual parts. Jeez. Okay, so biodiversity is key. What about those larger natural processes we touched on earlier, like the water cycle, carbon cycle, all those things that keep the whole planet ticking? How do those fit into this planetary anti-fragility puzzle? Those cycles, those systems, they're the backbone of Earth's resilience. Mm. They've been fine-tuned over 
billions of years. Talk about a track record. Right. And honestly, we're only beginning to grasp how truly intricate and interconnected they really are. The researchers are pretty clear. They say, we need a cautious approach here. One driven by research and understanding rather than trying to force things to control or manipulate these systems. Because trying to fix something we don't fully understand, that could backfire pretty spectacularly. Exactly. And that's not a risk we want to take, especially when we're talking about the systems that sustain life on Earth as we know it. We need to shift away from this mindset of like dominance over nature, you know? Yeah, like we're somehow separate from it, above it all. Right. We need to see ourselves as part of it, as partners. It's about understanding the sheer power and complexity of what keeps this planet going and finding ways to work with it, to support it, not against it. It's humbling when you put it like that. And this whole idea of planetary anti-fragility, it feels like we're just scratching the surface. Oh, absolutely. We're still figuring out what it all means, how it works. It's a bit daunting. Honestly, but also kind of exciting. I agree. It's a good kind of challenge. It forces us to really rethink our place in the world, to embrace the fact that we're part of something so much bigger than ourselves, mm. and to act accordingly. It's a call to action, really. Absolutely. So, to everyone listening, keep those questions coming. Stay curious. And remember, even small actions, they can ripple out and contribute to a healthier, more resilient planet. Well said. The future of planetary anti-fragility, it depends on all of us, you know? On our collective ability to understand and appreciate this incredible planet we call home and to find ways to work in harmony with it. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and we'll see you out there in the vast interconnected web of life.